Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on building a computer from scratch, uh, we're going to be talking about the ALU, where we're going to start talking about the ALU, because the ALU is quite a complex part of the CPU, and so it's going to be split up over a couple videos. Today, we're going to be talking about the addition and subtraction circuits of the ALU. Now, the ALU stands for... Uh, I should have written this out first, but uh, arithmetic and logic unit and is responsible for all of the math and logical operations that take place within the CPU. Now, it has, for our design, we're going to be designing, I think, an eight function ALU, add, subtract, and then some logic functions. So that sounds about right. But today we're just going to be talking about addition and subtraction because those are the two most complex and should be tackled on their own. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now let's talk about sub uh, addition first because it'll pave the way for subtraction. So we have two numbers, A, and I'm going to add that to B. Now binary math is a little more difficult than decimal math, because you're used to thinking in terms of 10. It's been taught into you by your educational system. Thinking in terms of a base 2 system is a little different, so it takes a little bit to wrap your head around. So, we have two terms, A, B, and we're going to add them. So, we're going to build like a truth table, but it's not going to be a truth table, it'll be a truth table with addition thrown in. So, it's different than a truth table, you'll see what I mean. So, A and B are both 0, A is 1, B is 0, A is 0, B is 1, and A and B are both 1. So, it's like a truth table, and then we're going to have the outputs. And the output is going to be what the result would be if we had added. So, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, one 0 plus 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 0. But we have a carry we have to consider. So, I'll make this up here. Carry. And that's it. And I'll call this bit down here the drop bit. And I'll try to make my D's look different than my AND gates. So I apologize for any confusion. Um, okay, so what we have to do is using these truth tables, math truth tables, addition truth tables, whatever you want to call them, we have to construct a circuit, a logical diagram, which will satisfy the tables. So let's start with the drop bit, the bit that is dropped, the result, if you will. You can see there's a bit dropped, and it satisfies an XOR gate. So when they're both zero or both true, the output is false. But when either one is true, the output is true. So that satisfies an XOR gate. So we can draw... So we have an XOR gate that represents our drop. We've got A and we've got B. Now we've got to consider the carry. What constitutes the carry? Well, the carry only occurs when both A and B are true. So it's satisfied with an AND gate. There's our AND gate. Here's our carry out, B, and A, and they're real. Now, this adds one bit, A and B represented by one bit. So this is not a full addition circuit, this is called a half adder, because it's technically half of an addition circuit. So it adds one bit, A and B, and doesn't have a carry in, which we'll talk about in just a bit. So just to make sure you understand this, this I'll write XOR here and here. So when either A or B, but not both A and B, are true, a bit is dropped into the drop bit area. When both A and B are true, there's a carry. Simple enough. 
Now let's talk about a full adder. So we're still adding A and B. But we've got a couple things to consider now. We have to consider the change from C out to C in. We have a carry, in our half adder, we had a carry out. We have to consider what that means for the next bit, because it has to be put into the next bit. And we also have to consider um, that effect on the half adder. So, let's just give it some numbers. We've got A, B, and we're going to add them. And let's make A, 0, 1, 0, and B, 1, 1, 0. Let's add these together. I'm not going to call that the drop for a reason. I shall specify in just a moment. Okay, so, A and B, 0. Result is 0. This is 0. And this is 0. Oh, no, not 0. 1. Now, the carry is going to be put here. Now, you see there's a carry, because these are both true. But I'm not going to put it up here. I'm actually going to move the carry down here. And we're going to do a second addition operation. So, there was a carry here. So, there's a carry down here, no carry here, and no carry here. This cross, and the result is... 1, 0, 0, 0. So, the name, whoop, scroll down too much, the name kind of gave it away. This is a half adder, so in order to get a full adder, we have to put two half adders together. See? It's, it's clever naming. So, if we, ta if we look at our logic diagram, we start with our first half adder. which, again, is an AND gate and an XOR gate. We have A, we have B. Okay, but now we have to consider carry in. Oop, so I'll, I'll just call this carry in. There we are. carry in has to be added into the result. So this was the temporary result here, so we'll create another half adder, which again is just an XOR gate and an AND gate. And the result is plugged into this and this, and then the carry is plugged in here and here, XOR, and. So here's our drop, and here's our carry out. And there we go. Now, while this does add only one bit, both in A and B and carry, you can take this and stack them together. Oh, oh there's one bit I forgot. Getting ahead of myself there. This isn't the C out we have to add an OR gate. There we go. That's a terrible line. Try it again. That's our carry out. Okay. So it's your standard two half adders put together. That's self-explanatory, but this extra bit here, this OR gate, which is attaching the uh, carry operations from the first half adder and the second half adder. So all it says is if there's a carry here or a carry here, it doesn't matter. They could both be carries. You still have a carry in the end. So easy enough. So just two half adders put together with an OR gate to allow for a carry. So that would happen if 
there was a carry here, and there's a so that carry get gets put over here. So if A was one here, you would have two carries from the first half adder and the second half adder. So either doesn't matter as long as one is set or both set, you get a carry out. So nice and easy, pretty simple. Now this bit here. Note that we were doing a 3-bit addition operation. We have a 4th bit. Oh no. This is called... Oh, that's not even remotely pointing to the... This is the carry... flag. We'll talk about this a little later when we talk uh, about another component to the CPU. But what the carry flag indicates to the CPU and to the person programming the CPU is that there has been an operation which has caused you to which has caused a result larger than your addition and all of your uh, arithmetic operations are capable of handling so this is just an extra little bit so this isn't zero if you were to perform an and operation this and operation check the numbers you'd see, oh no, I've got all zeros. That doesn't seem right. I must have done something wrong. You also have to check the carry flag, because the carry flag will say, oh no, you're not wrong. There's just a little bit that we can't put back out, because we're only set up to do three bits, not three bits. Oh, and there's this little bit over here, because that would just be a four-bit system. So the carry flag is useful in mathematical operations, and it allows the, uh, the size of the processor to remain constant always three bits throughout the system, not three and a little more. So something to consider. Okay, so that is addition. Pretty simple. Let's talk about subtraction, where things get a little trickier. So we're going to make another table, A minus B. We have our A here. We have our B here. Now, in subtraction, we don't have carry. We have borrow. I'm still going to write C, but I want you to remember that C means borrow, just so we can keep the same lettering scheme. Okay, and let's draw our truth table. Put a C up there. Uh, why am I drawing that line? So A minus B. Here's the drop. So, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Let's solve this. So, 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1, excuse me, 1 minus 1 is 0. And 0 minus 1 is 1 with a borrow. Yes, that does make sense. That pauses for you to realize that, ooh, there's something kind of weird about this. I'm going to explain what this is at the end, but I want you to just keep this in your mind. This is a... special case, which is going to lead to something interesting about how uh, computers process numbers. Okay. So, when do we borrow? When do we borrow? Because it's a little different than uh, addition. We borrow when a sub n is less than b sub n. The term of a is less than the term of b. Or when a sub n is 0 and b sub n is 1. And we can simplify this just down to not a sub n and b sub n. I want to make this clear because when we talked about addition, we kind of just skipped over this little explanation here because it's a little easier to see. When you have to negate something, it becomes a little trickier to see. So I want to make this negation clear. Because if we were to construct a simple AND gate, in the same way we constructed a half adder, as we are going to a half subtractor, your AND gate's not going to work, so you have to invert the A 
you have to invert that A to get the truth table for an AND gate to work out. So I just want to make that clear. I want to point that out. Okay, so with that, let's draw our logic diagram. It's For a half subtractor, it's exactly the same as the half adder, except with this negation worked in. So you have your XOR gate, and you have your AND gate. A, B. This comes down here, and then this comes down here as well. And there we go. So here's your little inverter. So here's your drop, and here's your carry out. Easy enough. And when I again, when I say carry out, I mean borrow out, it's just to keep the num the letters the same. Okay. So with that, this is our half subtractor. Let's write. The dot, let's look at a full subtractor. Now again, like the half adder to the full adder, to half subtractor to full subtractor, it's exactly the same, just with that XOR, with, no, with that negation worked in, it's exactly the same. So A minus B. And I'm going to draw it the same way, A minus B. Here we have 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1. But now we've got to deal with the carry. There's a carry in this, so it moves over here. So there's a carry we must consider. No carry here and no carry here. And our final result is 0, 1, 1. Simple enough. 5 minus 2 is 3. Nice and easy. So again, the considerations we had to make for the full adder are exactly the same considerations we make for the full there, subtractor. So let's draw the logic diagram. Again, it's exactly the same as for the full adder, just with those negations. XOR and XOR A, B, there's that negation, and then our carry, which I know is borrow, again, yeah, same letters. Just keeping everything nice and simple. We do another half subtractor. This gets plugged in here. Carry in gets put here and here, and then I'll negate this. That is. Ooh. Try that again. I'm going to negate that here. There we go. So here's our drop. And then our carry is just an OR gate. And that's it. There's our carry out. Pretty simple. Again, it's exactly the same as a half adder to full adder, just with those negations added in. There is one thing I want to talk about before I move on to the special case I mentioned earlier. If we're going to make the ALU and we want to have addition and subtraction, which we do, they're useful operations, it's going to be a pain to have two circuits when a, ha a full adder and a full subtractor are essentially the same thing, just with these little inverters added. There's a quick way to do that, a controlled inversion, if you will is if we have an XOR gate and then we have a case here 0 
and then here we have our subtraction bit. Subtraction bit. So if we want to do a subtraction operation, is that right? No, that's wrong. Whoops, that should be a 1, not a 0. There we go. And a subtraction bit. So if we want to do a subtraction, we set the subtraction bit high, and the output is a 0. If we don't want to do a subtraction bit and we just want to do addition, then we let this be 0 and the output is 1. So what you do is you replace the inverter, and in this case here, with the inverter. So this, the thing that's being tied to the inverter is this bit here. And then whether or not the subtraction bit is high or not will control whether or not the bit out is inverted. So this is a, oh, whoops. This is a controlled inverter. Pretty simple. Okay. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about this special case here. This is about how computers deal with negative numbers. If you've ever done programming, you know that there's something called a assigned number and an unsigned number. And the thing you'll know about the unsigned number to the signed number is that the unsigned number will go twice as high but not ha but ma while maintaining the same range and you'll see what i mean in just a second so an unsigned byte it has 256 cases but goes from 0 to 255 a signed byte on the other hand, still has 256 cases, but goes from negative 128 to 127. How can that be? Well, it's really, it's a simple concept called two's complement. Not two's complement, I'm sure two is very nice, but we're looking at the complement to two, not telling it's it's nice okay so let's say we have a three bit number zero 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 one a lot of possibilities you'll see why I have to make it three bit and uh, that should be a zero what am I doing okay so three bits that's eight possibilities so here we have unsigned, and here we'll have signed. So easy enough, unsigned, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, seven possibility, er, eight possibilities, 0 through 7. Unsigned, on the other hand, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. What happened? When you're talking about signed bits, these become the signed bits. The most significant bit becomes the signed bit, meaning it's the negative of the largest value. So as you can see, the largest value we have here is 4, and so we negate that, and then we just add to it. So this is negative 4 plus 1, negative 4 plus 2, negative 4 plus 3. And so that's how you make negative numbers in computers. Now I should point out, technically it's not negative. Technically it's still a signed number. But this is a case in programming we talk about. You find what you look for. If you're looking for an unsigned number, in a 3-bit system and you come across 111, you're going to find a 7. If, on the other hand, in your programming you're looking for a signed number and you come across a 111, it means negative 1. So, it doesn't 
it's just a way to represent negative numbers provided you're looking for a negative number. If you're not looking for a negative number, it's still just 7. So that's 2's complement, how we represent negative numbers in binary. So that is it for looking at the ALU uh, subtraction and addition circuits.